Fractures of the calcaneus. Fractures of the calcaneus can be extra-articular or intra-articular. The intra-articular fractures of the calcaneus will have a primary fractal line that runs obliquely through the posterior facet and it divides the calcaneus into two parts. The intermedial part is called the succinctaculum fragment and a posterolateral tuberosity fragment. The anteromedial succinctacular fragment is a constant fragment and it is held in its position by the ligaments. So the succinctacular fragment or constant fragment stays in its position connected to the talus by the talocalcaneal ligaments and the interosseous ligaments. As you can see here in this diagram, the constant fragment can help in the reconstruction of the calcaneus. You will try to reduce the posterior facet to the constant succinctacular fragment. Also, the calcaneal fracture will have a secondary fracture line that can produce either a tongue type fracture or joint depression fracture, as you can see here in this diagram. It is the tongue type fracture that can create skin problem if the fracture is badly displaced and in some situations it may need to be reduced and fixed urgently. In fact, tongue type can do very well with percutaneous reduction and fixation contrary to a joint depression which would not do as well with percutaneous reduction and fixation of the fracture. The most common complication following non-surgical treatment of displaced interarticular fracture of the calcaneus is post-traumatic arthritis. Surgery definitely decreases the risk of postoperative arthritis in displaced intraarticular fractures of the calcaneus. The majority of surgeons advocate for open reduction of displaced calcaneal fractures. Patients that are younger than 4 years old will do better with surgery, especially women in a non-labor job. Type 2 and Type 3 Sanders classification of displaced intraarticular calcaneal fractures with a bolar angle of more than 15 degrees results in a better outcome as compared to non-surgical treatment. So what is Sanders classification? It is based on the number of articular fragments seen in coronal CT scans. Type 1, non-displaced. Type 2, one fracture line. The calcaneus is split into two fragments. Type 3, two fracture lines, creating three fracture fragments of the calcaneus. Type 4, three fracture lines or more, or if it is comminuted, will make four fragments or more. This is the fracture type that has most of the common complications, wound dehiscence and arthritis. Type 4 is the one that you may need to do primary arthrodesis if you cannot restore the articular surface. In general, if you have two-part intraarticular fracture, you will do open reduction internal fixation. And if you have type 4 fracture, comminuted, multiple fragments, you may need to do subtalar arthrodesis, or you may need to do conservative treatment initially. CT scan axial cuts will show the calcaneocuboid joint and the perineal tendon subluxation. CT scan sagittal views will show the subtalar joint and its depression. CT scan coronal views will show the posterior facet displacement and the subluxation and the number of the joint fracture fragments. 
the bowler angle is important. The normal bowler angle is between 20 to 40 degrees. The bowler angle is measured on a lateral x-ray. Collapse of the posterior facet will decrease or flatten the bowler angle. So which patient is expected to have a poor outcome following open reduction and internal fixation of displaced intraarticular fracture of the calcaneus? It is the patient with a lower bowler angle. You may want to delay the surgery until the soft tissue condition improves and until you have the wrinkle test. When you try to fix the calcaneus with a plate or a screws and one of the posterior facet lag screws was long and it happened that its position will be below the syntaculum, you may affect the flexor hallucis longus tendon. The patient will have pain and catching sensation on the medial foot, especially when the patient tries to do active flexion of the great toe. Isolated flexion of the great toe also can occur due to long screws. The tendon of the flexor hallucis longus muscle lies underneath the syntaculum tili and that tendon will be tethered over the longest screw. So triggering pain, popping, and loss of excursion of the great toe can occur early in the postoperative period. You may want to do some estimate measurements on the CT scan before surgery to know the length of the screws. And always check the axial view intraoperatively to detect any long screws underneath the syntaculum. Another important entity is when you have a comminuted fracture of the calcaneus, there will be deformity of the calcaneus with collapse of the talus into the calcaneus. There will be loss of dorsiflexion of the ankle with anterior ankle impingement from the horizontal talus. And if the fracture is comminuted, you may get arthritis. And the patient may get chronic hind foot pain with limitation of those reflection of the ankle. That's why you do this reaction, subtalar bone block arthrodesis. This will deal with the problem of arthritis and it will also restore the height of the calcaneus and improve those reflection of the ankle. Also, when you do the surgery, the calcaneus, be aware there is some incidence of perineal tendon subluxation from displacement of the wall laterally. So it takes with it the perineal tendon and then the perineal tendon subluxes. Always check the CT scan axial cuts to make sure you don't have perineal tendon subluxation because if it happened, then you need to do repair of the superior perineal retinaculum in addition to fixing the calcaneal fractures. Always examine the spine in patients with calcaneal fracture the incidence of associated spine fracture is about 10%. Be aware of the fact that the calcaneal fracture surgery may have a risk to the nerves. In the sinus tarsi approach, which was limited approach, may affect the superficial perineal nerve. The extensile lateral approach may involve the shoran nerve. Be aware that when you have an avulsion fracture of the calcaneus, surgery for reduction and fixation of the fracture should be done urgently to avoid skin complications in the back of the heel. The most common complication of open reduction and internal fixation of calcaneal fractures is skin complications. It can affect approximately 20% of patients. Delayed fixation of the calcaneus 
is often recommended depending on the condition of the soft tissue and the appearance of the wrinkle sign. These precautions are taken to avoid wound healing problems that's common in calcaneal fractures. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.